Uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Uh, can we stand for the reading of the word? Verse 26, then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creep, creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Verse 27, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. Verse 28, and God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. I'm good now. You're good, bro. I appreciate you. Um, heavens over every living thing that moves on the earth. 29, and God said, behold, I have given you every plant eating seal that is on the face of all the earth and every tree with seed and its fruit, you shall have them for food. Verse 30, and every beast of the earth and to every bird of the heavens and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made and behold, it was very good. There was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. And now I want to bring our, um, our attention to Genesis 2 and 6. Genesis chapter 2, verse 6. And a mist, a mist was going up from the land and was watering the whole face of the ground. And 7 says, Then the Lord God formed the man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living creature and the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east and there he put the man whom he had formed. God, allow us to have an amazing time in you. Allow us to have ears to hear and hearts to receive tonight. In Jesus' name, everybody say amen. Amen, you may be seated. Tonight, uh, we're going to start a series called Foundation. Foundation. And um, it's going to be coming from the, the mindset of what's my base? Foundation. What's my base? Um, when we look at foundation, we treat it, um, I want us to treat it just as a simple base. Uh, ladies, think of it this way. Um, foundation that you put on when you put on makeup. It's just, the, it's just the base. Now, there are some people out there that put on a total foundation that do not match their actual skin. I'm like, you're not that light. <laughs> you're not that light. You're not that dark neither. Um, so think of it as a base. When you build a building, what's the foundation? And I want us to bring our frame of mind in this series for tonight, what's my base? I want us to look at it like this. What's my base value? my personal base value. Um, basic me. How many basic people do we have in the house today? <laughs> uh, welcome, we are all in one accord, all the basic people. But what is my base when it comes to value? Value is our kryptonite. Put that title back up on the screen, foundation, foundation that, you can just keep it up. Uh, listen, value can sometimes be our kryptonite and when we search for what is my value, we will often find ourselves looking for things to fill a void that only God can fill because we're searching for value in all the wrong places. So we have to realize where is my value from, but I have to realize that I have to be careful to make sure that my value is not my kryptonite, but our value is revealed in our base, in our base Basic self, sweatpants, us. When you don't do your hair, and kind of when you don't brush your teeth, basic you. That's nasty, but basic you. What's basic me? What is my basic value? Um, how much do I cost? How much value do I have? Sometimes we need to hear more than you are loved. In church, we often hear that 
you're loved, you're this, you're that. But I think sometimes we need to realize and hear as well, okay, I understand that I'm loved, but how? Like, how am I loved? So I want to talk us through three different points. And the first point is basic me is blessed. Basic me, sweatpants, regular, degular me is blessed. Somebody say basic me is blessed. Look at Genesis uh, chapter 1, the 27th verse. It says, verse 27, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. And verse 28 says, and God blessed them. He blessed them. Basic. From the foundation, he blesses them. Basic me is blessed. Our relationship with value is sometimes based in what we have instead of what we are. And what we are is blessed. The benefits, the basic benefits of being blessed are being favored, are being uh, having an extension of grace. But I wanted you to listen to this. I want you to listen to what Matthew says. Matthew chapter 5 tells us that. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Bless, 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 bless. My basic self is blessed. Basic me is blessed. The second thing I want to show us is that basic me has provision. Basic me has provision. And I sh we see it in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 29. Verse 29 says, and God said, behold, I have given you every plant seed, yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food. What does this mean? In reality, basic me really has a lack for nothing. I really don't have a lack because I'm blessed and I have provision. Basic me is provided for. God saw that I would need food, so he provided for it. God saw that I would need peace of mind, so he provided for it. God saw that I would need a dwelling place, so he provided for it. Because basic me needs some basic things, and basic me has provision. Has provision. Think of all the things that God has provided. Not the stuff that you asked for and he made it happen. Think of all the stuff that he's just provided even when you did not need it. There's been so many things that we have gotten out of God's, out of our basic blessing and we have gotten provision from it because he is a merciful God. He's a good God and he gives us provision. He provides get money for our, put gas in our car. He provides for us to be able to eat and have a place to live and go to school and all this stuff. But you don't realize it's provision because through your daily process, you're just doing it. You don't even realize it's provision. That's how good provision is. You don't even realize that it's there because it's working for you already. It's already in motion for you. That's provision. Provision is not me trying to figure out, okay, I'm going to have to go get it. Oh, my gosh, I got to figure out how to get it. No, no, provision is it already being provided for, and you just walking in it. A lot of us are walking in provision that we did not deserve to have. But yet God has graced us because we are blessed and we have provision. The third thing I want us to see is that basic me has ownership and responsibility. Basic me has ownership and responsibility. Look at Genesis chapter one, verse 26, verse 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and the, over the livestock and more and more and more. Let them have dominion. Dominion meaning ownership. God has put so many things in our hands. God has put so many things in our hands. How responsible are we going to be with the things in our hands? 
How responsible are we going to be? Because here's the thing. We, we have, some of us are asking for God to give us something, and our hands are so full of what he already gave us, that's why we can't receive it. But if you don't do good with what's in your hands, he's not going to give you something else just for you to fill your hands up with and say, look at all this stuff I got. That's how we look sometimes. We're like, look at, look at all, I, I do this, I do that. I'm talented here, I'm talented there. But you aren't even a master of one of those things because you're too busy trying to be a master and, and, a, and a great thing person at all things. No, no, no. Be good with the stuff that's in your hand. You ever, uh, you ever be, you don't even realize this sometimes. I think I preached about this one time a long time ago. We, we fuss about other people's stuff and get jealous about other people's stuff that we forget that we are sitting in something that we used to pray about and cry about, but we forgot about it because we're too busy looking at what somebody else has in their hands, not realizing that God basic has given, God has given us in our basic self ownership and responsibility. Yeah. Ownership and responsibility. Whatever is in your hands is yours to care for. The Bible literally said, and it shows us in 26, he said, let us make man in our own image after our likeness and let them have dominion. Dominion is a big word for ownership. Basically, let them be in charge of all of that. That's not how God talked, but that's how I, I felt it in my head. Let them be in charge of all of that. Let them be in charge of it. And what is beautiful about this is that Whatever's in your hands is yours to take care of. Um, when, when God gives us something that's responsibility, that's ownership, what we have to realize is that God gave it to me, so he must kind of trust me. So since he kind of trusts me, or really does trust me, I don't want to disappoint him. Forget about me. I don't want to disappoint God because basic me has ownership and responsibility. Y'all get what I'm saying? Has ownership and responsibility. Um, I remember when I got, now, don't judge me, but we're gonna go, we're gonna go somewhere tonight. Y'all with me, all right? Y'all, y'all good? Okay. So, uh, I used to have this car, and I know my mom probably gonna watch this later. Uh, <laughs> I used to have this car, and I remember one of the first cars in my early life, we had a Ford Escort like a 1995 Ford Escort, not, not the new one with the big screen and heated steering wheels. I don't even know if this car really warmed up that well. Like this car was so old, it, we, used to, we basically just called it the green car because that's what color it was. You know that car old if its name is the green car. <laughs> so I used to have this Ford, this 1995 Ford Escort and this car was cool to me at the time because when you open the door, you would sit in the car, and then when you shut the door, the seat belt would go zzzz. <laughs> I know, this is <laughs> Yo, there's some people in the audience like, what are you talking about? But this was dope back in the day. I was like, look at this seat going all the way around me. So the seat belt uh, would come around you and you would just be rolling. Uh, now, I remember that car was good on gas, but it broke down. So then the next car that we got, we got two of these. We had a black Chevy Blazer, 1996 Chevy Blazer, and then a silver uh, 1996 Chevy Blazer. Now, the silver one, my sister got into a car wreck with it, with my mom, and they was, it was a long day. But they wrecked that one, so we went and got a black one. Now, the black one, the door on the driver's side, uh, what did it do? What did it, it didn't close. <laughs> so you had to kind of like jimmy it and hold it while you was driving. So imagine just me, like, <laughs> just doing this. This is not safe. But I held it because like that, that was what was in my hands. That car was in my hands. So I, you know, I be rolling. It got it got good on gas. Uh, it was a. It, I sat tall. It was it was a good truck. Okay, a, a good uh, SUV. Okay, that that SUV died. Um, the next vehicle I had was a, a 2003 Crown Vic. Y'all know what a Crown Vic is? It's the cop car. It's the cop car. I, I, I feel the people in the balcony judging me. I feel y'all judging me. Um, the Crown Vic was basically the police car. 
And at night, I used to hate driving this car because everybody in front of me would drive slow because they think I'm the police. I'm like, I'm not the police. Hurry up. I'm trying to go home. Especially in the wintertime, I'd be hating it. So I had this Crown Vic, and this was like one of the first cars that was like mine, that had my name on it. Because them first few ones, like it was the family car. Anybody ever been driving the family car? Like your mom drive it, you drive it, you kind of drive it when nobody else need it, all those things. This one was mine. And I remember um, the church, I didn't have a car at that time. The church um, gifted this car to me at that time. And I was so, so happy. I drove that car till it didn't drive no more. <laughs> and I remember that this car would get up on the freeway. Had a V8 in it. It was Zoom, and I'd be gone. <laughs> I would be uh, pulling next to people who drive fat, way faster cars than mine, and I'd be like, hey, you wanna go? I don't know if I should be confessing this on tape. I don't want the police to come get me. <laughs> um, but I had this car, I had this Crown Vic, and I loved it, okay? Crown Vic dies. And now, we are at the 2014 Honda Civic. 24, anybody ever had a Honda Civic? Ever had a Honda Civic? That's a good vehicle. It warm, this is the fastest warming up vehicle I've ever had in my life. Now, that don't got heated seats or heated steering wheels, but I turn that car on, maybe five minutes, that car is crispy warm. I'd be so happy in the morning. I'd be like, oh, I'm about to get in my warm car. Um, it's push to start. Now, I ain't gonna lie, this was like my first bougie car. I said, I got push to start, the real view mirrors, uh, the rear view window, defrost and all that stuff. My other ones didn't defrost that well. This one defrost real good. I mean, I be rolling in this Honda Civic. And I love it because it's mine and it's in my hands. Now, what my next car will be and probably my last one will be a 2022 Ford Raptor with the 37 package on it. 37 uh, inch wheels. I know y'all like Pastor Lincoln, why you need that? Mind your business, I want it. <laughs> and I waited and I'm waiting on it, so I'm definitely gonna get it. But here's what I'm trying to show you in the middle of all those cars. Now look at all those cars. Think of all those cars as different versions. Every single, those, every single one of those cars I was, a different, I was in a different place of life. I was in a different thought pattern of life. I was at a different age. So as the cars changed, I changed. As the cars changed, I changed. Basic me started off with that Ford Escort. But you know what I had when I was in that Ford Escort? I was blessed. <laughs> I had provision. And I had ownership. Fast forward, I went to that Chevy Blazer. I was blessed. I had provision and I had ownership. The value did not, the value of, of, of how blessed I was and how provided I, I was for and how much ownership I had did not change. The vehicle changed, but the value did not change. I had provision. I had, um, I had provision. I had all these things and it was beautiful because each vehicle, yes, they were old, they would die, but each vehicle I drove, I was able to develop in each season. I want you to see yourself this way. Basic you was still blessed, still had provision, and still had ownership. Basic you, that's the base model, not the model. Well, look, from Ford Escort to, to Ford Raptor, I still am blessed, I still have provision, and I still have ownership. It do, my value does not change based on my circumstance or what I'm driving or where I'm going in life. I'm still blessed, I still have provision, and I still have ownership. What does that mean? Basic me is good enough. Basic me has all of these massive qualities. Basic me has all of this. How can basic me be blessed? How can basic me have provision? How can basic me have ownership? Just like Adam. And what I noticed that really made me see how valuable my basic self was, was in this chapter. What I realized is that 
Adam was blessed when God made him and breathed into him. Adam had provision because he gave him all the land and he gave him ownership, saying, you take care of it. Now realize Adam has not had to prove anything in order to receive all three of these things. They were just given freely. Adam has not performed one work and yet he is blessed, he has provision, and he's given ownership. Adam hasn't plowed a field. Adam hasn't done this. Adam hasn't scraped, swept the floor. Adam hasn't had to try to prove to God. Basic Adam was giving blessing, was giving provision, and he was giving ownership. All before he did anything. What does this mean? What does this mean? All before you try and prove anything, your basic self is loved because you are blessed, you are provided for, and you're given ownership and responsibility. So the next time you question, and I'm wrapping up, the next time you question, what's my value? Am I valuable? Remember to look at your foundation and your foundation, the basic you, is blessed, provided for, and you have ownership. When you can realize that your foundation is not wrapped in what you do or what you bring to the table, and you just see that your foundation is like, Basic me on the couch is blessed, provided for, and I have ownership. I'm just like Adam. Adam, look, go back and read the book. Go back and read the chapter. Adam has not performed one task, hasn't done anything to make God proud yet. And he was given blessing. He was given provision. And he was given ownership. Realize your foundation. Realize your foundation. Everybody bow their head. Let's bow their head with me real quick. Tonight, I, I just didn't want to linger. <laughs> didn't want to take up a bunch of time. I just want to tell you that basic you, hear this, the version of you that cries, the version of you that's hurt, the version of you that's confused, the version of you that's angry, the version of you that you try to hide from everybody else, the insecure, ver it's the insecure you is still blessed, still provided for, and you're still given ownership over things. Stop worrying about what you don't have and look at your foundational pillars. You are blessed. You are provided for, and you have ownership. Tonight, I don't want you to leave this place, whether you're here in person or you're listening to this later online, I don't care. Do not dare lay your head down tonight and not remind yourself that I'm hurting, I'm frustrated, I'm confused, but man, I'm glad that my foundation is blessed that I have ownership. I can walk into my house. That's provision. I have food to eat. That's blessed. I can drive a car. That's ownership. I can do all these things. Things. This, listen to me with your hands bowed. And then listen, listen, listen. All of this is your basic self. Basic self is blessed, provided for, and has ownership. I can't imagine what your self down the road, your evolved self, your spiritually mature self, your called self, your, your self that operates in the Holy Spirit, your, you're using your gifts of the Spirit. I can't imagine what foundation you can build off of because your basic self is blessed, provided for, and have ownership. 
You ain't got to, you know, yeah, yeah. You don't have to slit your wrists. You don't have to think about committing suicide. You don't have to think about any of these dark things. You don't have to lay up in the bed crying, wondering, God, why does nobody see me? Guess what? God sees you because he calls you blessed. He says that I'm going to provide for you and you won't even realize that you're walking in provision. But even more so, I'm going to give you dominion over this of what's in your hands. in your hands don't worry about what you don't have don't worry about who you don't have be excited be joyful and what you do have and what you have is blessing provision and ownership God I thank you that we can come here come to you speak to you, learn of you. I thank you that you're building something that does not quite make sense right now. That you're set, you're laying a foundation that feels empty but is so full of promise. I thank you. I thank you. It's confusing. It's weird. It's uncomfortable. But the foundation that you are laying has to be laid so that we can build upon it. We can build upon it. So God, let us have the strength to sit in the waiting, to sit in the patience. Let us learn how to wait on you, how to be patient, how to see that there is more on the other side if we just take care of what's in our hands. Let us lay this basic foundation and build on the fact that we are blessed. again it's called the ever it's birthing it's evolution i hate to use that word in church but whatever it's it's letting things evolve and change you got to be okay with things changing you got to be okay with transition and transformation if you're not okay with transformation you will always be looking for verify I need somebody to verify that what I'm doing is important. I need somebody to verify that I have value. I need somebody to validate. I need somebody to validate. I need, no, 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 no. You're clapping and, and waiting look for somebody else's clap and don't even realize I got some good things in my hand. I got some good things. They just, they just in transformation. They're just in transition. They're in utero. They're in life. Just gotta let it grow. Even when I want to rush it, <laughs> I want to get back to it, feel it. No, 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 no. The uncomfortable is where God resides, so I'm gonna stay there. The uncomfortable is where God speaks, transforms, transitions. So tonight, I pray that this word helped you. I pray that this word spoke to you.